each other. Show the camera fight. This is how the camera fight. which is a lovely cafe in Turles. Um, if you're from Turles, definitely come to the Green Sheep, buy some food, um, definitely buy food. And Lucy puts her heart into the food, I don't know if that comes across weird because it's not kind of her organ she puts into it, but kind of more of a symbol, like she puts her heart into the food. Like, well, um, yeah, so definitely, definitely come to the Green Sheep in Turles. Um, yeah, today we're joined by uh, Peter Ryan, who has, uh, he's from Turles, aka uh, Harsh, what's it? What's Tarn- oh, yeah, AKA Tarn- is also known as Holes in Hollywood now. That's oh, okay, right, that's a uh, good. Hollywood. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> but, um, yeah, we're joined by Peter Ryan, who has a very inspiring story, which we're going to get into. Um, I suppose you want to start with kind of your main, main story from what happened in 2010. Oh, Kablamo. Hugh, 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 Hugh <laughs> just, Hugh, going, Hugh, Hugh, quick, quick synopsis, <laughs> minor synopsis. Yeah, yeah, Hugh, Hugh, Hugh told me avoid this, like the plague. Um, I know, there's, there's plenty. Uh, it's It's... <laughs> It's well versed at this stage, but um, yeah, so look, it's, it's actually 10 year anniversary now this next month, but um, perfectly normal life, doing all the same things, Turles CBS, hurling, how are you getting on, all that kind of jazz, uh, left school, driving my car, working in construction, thought it was really cool, and yeah, to start that year, I got an eye condition called Libra's Hereditary Optic Neuropathy, which essentially it takes 80 to 90 percent your your vision like so that all happened over the space of about 14 months so crazy crazy um and yeah then sure look here i am yeah. 10 years later so um the proof is it's not terminal but uh but there was a lot of ups and downs in that middle part anyway and probably took me three four years to actually get my shit together and get my head around it and yeah but yeah. um Look at we're we're at the other side of it and things are things are good thankfully. Yeah, and you're you're um you're entered in you were just in, you were in Rio in two thousand was it two thousand sixteen was Rio? Yeah, two thousand sixteen. So I like I give obviously gave up sport initially. I had a big GA background in soccer and yeah. they were my main two sports and give up give them up early doors had to and I actually didn't think sport was something I'd be ever doing again or was was for me like it was kind of it just went into this list of things that you can't do and. Yeah. Like I said, I was kind of shedding a lot of who I was and learning new things. But um, yeah, I, like, I suppose. So, I actually, I'm sorry, just that blew my mind. I was watching another interview with you. Like, um, I can't remember who did the interview. Now it was like a piece kind of about you, and you said that about um, it felt like you were shedding a part of your life, like when you kind of had to like, um, which really really hit me. And I think like I do definitely think people take for granted what they can do because that like when you were saying you were like kind of doing things, it was very like. Um, I suppose like your kind of average stuff and stuff and I think people take that for granted odd I'd tell you like the gratitude appreciation like there are words that are like screaming out at me still because like it was less if look there's two ways of looking at it like one you're 18 19 20 you're supposed to be carefree and I definitely didn't have any like structure or five year plans going on like but but the other side is and and that's grand but like I didn't appreciate what I did have and it took it it took that old adage of until it was gone before I actually figured out and like you said I don't miss like I've done some cool things as a sighted able-bodied person like Crow Park this that the other or whatever like but it's actually simplicity you miss and that's something that like kind of resonates with me still like so I am um, yeah I try and live that way and just get on with it and make the most of it but hey I suppose to bring it back to the games like yeah. sport I thought was gone and I, I like after a bit of counseling and a bit of a lot of other stuff I just needed to get back into sport simple as and um started cycling and the thing just snowballed really like that was the start to 2013 and by 2016 I was at the games in Rio so it was a it was a crazy six years or oh, three years or cycling you're doing in Rio, yeah yeah I'm on a tandem bike um yeah. so it's a look it's it's a crazy sport it's you know it like it's rare like you have two people on one bike like there's I don't know like I think you could I could write a book on the dynamic that's at play because like 
I'm a solo athlete, but it's a team sport. I yeah. can't I can't even train outside unless it's with him. So you're, there's almost an independence there that people don't see. There's there's a just that team spirit like and and then Anto can get off the front of the bike he can go off and win solo races but if I'm not with him training I'm in the back of a shed and trying to clock up the long hours on your own and you know it's um like it's empowering what they do as well I don't think they get enough credit like because they're they're like he's he's letting me facilitate a part of my life that I thought was gone and you know yeah I actually was thinking thinking that similar like what was his name then Anthony Walsh yeah I think that's impressive for someone to do you know to to get to that stage where he obviously got into cycling it's not like he got into cycling to help you he was into cycling uh, already so it's also as impressive on his behalf to kind of dedicate his time to I suppose and the same vice with all of them really completely he's look he's had a really good career on a solo bike he was a pro for a few years he did friends he lived in Canada he did all that thing and I suppose he just came into it look at essentially he loves the bike and he's a bit of a purist to the sport and he just said this is whole new thing and it kind of re-motivated him because he was getting to a place where he was thinking of retiring because the domestic scene didn't actually there was no real stimulus there like he was just going back doing the same thing that he'd done for the last eight years so um so like he's reinvigorated as well and he's saying look it's a nice way to round out my career why not he he gave a look at it about seven years ago so he he actually came to the sport late i was telling you about like he did kings in and whatever like he he was a good footballer but uh he started cycling and kind of on his upward trajectory he did a bit of the stuff with the irish team i think it's seven eight years ago but he actually got called up then into the elite Irish squad. So he left wow. the Paris scene and he went off and then became a pro and did that for a few years. So he's kind of rounding it back out. How so long have you joined with him now? A year, is it? Yeah, properly since October. October. Yeah, right. since we kind of solidified it and said, right, let's put the head down and try and get to Tokyo. So wow. um, it's cool. Like, yeah, it's a, there's a synergy attached to it like that. Yeah, yeah it's, um, it's, a, it's a really hard one to describe. It's insanely impressive that you're going to Tokyo this year. That's brilliant. <coughs> Well, we're we still have to qualify, but like we're we're getting closer the whole time. So the last the last qualifying event is in June now in Belgium, and then the squads won't be named until the end of June. So, like it really, like what we do is we qualify slots. So there's three Irish, but at the moment there's three Irish bikes going to Tokyo, and it's my job to be one of those three Irish bikes now. So look at it, it's it's more like not wanting to just test fate here by saying that I'm going or anything like that yeah, there's right, yeah, do you know that, yeah so yeah. anything can happen in a road race and there's still like essentially there's seven eight of us that are want to be those three yeah, those three bikes yeah. so like in fairness it's um it's mad competitive like since the games in London yeah. pff, the standard has just went through the roof like it's yeah, yeah. Sport, it? it is like cause I tell you I came from team sports as well and it's yeah. an individual thing like and you yeah. see me like you know down here a bit or whatever like but you're no one no one forces me to go training. Like I have to, I have to kind of instigate every action. Shout out yourself, you know, yeah. Like coach me like, oh. yeah, exactly. <laughs> like yourself, whereas, like when I was, g- in itself, though, you can do, that. do you know? There's a lot of learnings and discipline in that. Like when I was a team sport, if I didn't turn up, everyone knew. Yeah. yeah. And then you, then you feel like you're letting down other people. Yeah. So half a half of that is that's actually what drives you is just that kind of herd mentality and it's like you don't yeah. want you don't want the bitchiness or you don't want so it's not as much because you want to be there but because you have to be there whereas like no one knows if I did it or don't do it only me and that's yeah. actually ultimately what ends up driving me now because like you rock onto a start line and you have like your mental checklist and it's like that's the, yeah it's the only thing that gives you confidence that's like and what is the checklist how do you drive yourself on your you know it's the little things like it's yeah. it's like right you're trying like you you rock up and you're talking to yourself and it's fully is like right i did this i did because what gives you a god-given right to beat mr dutch or mr poland like yeah, you start yeah. it's a complete placebo like because everyone everyone's as fit as each other at that level mm-hmm. but you start telling yourself that i wanted more than this lad or i I, I got up at five when he didn't yeah, and like he could have been up at four <laughs> but like you're not so do you reckon when people get to that level of like competing in sports that they're all actually as capable like athletic wise it's just more about like a mental like who wants it more I fully like across 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 the board in life I think it's not even sport it's across like I think application and work ethic start I think talent becomes a smaller piece of the pie the higher up you go yeah, I think so. right. um, be it, if you look at any walk of life you look at the lads that are successful like it's it's a constant and then yeah, yeah. and then there's always that correlation between talking about what you're doing and the people that are actually just doers and so yeah nice. yeah there's do you think a, you jinx things by talking do you take some of the energy of doing if you talk about it? I, I, yeah I think I think I think it's 
it's a really subjective thing. Like uh, I, I yeah, I I come from that school. Like, yeah. and I know in my other walk of life, that's yeah. kind of what I want to be. Like, it's yeah. just like come back when the job is done and yeah, let yeah, let the yeah, actions yeah. do the that's talk amazing, and then yeah. you know and it may now People sometimes well, so, like, think, yeah. sometimes from far out now and I I know I also do this like and I'll say like say remember the race around Ireland thing yes. I did. I had to actually say that out loud because right. if that was because I needed the outside pressure. To make I, yeah, 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 yeah. There's, 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 there's lines to trade. I know this is a bit contradictory, yeah. like, but, yeah, but, like, say with the race around Ireland, I was only competing against myself. But like, say in a race, I won't ever shout my mouth off because yes. one, like, it's disrespect. Yeah. But whatever, yeah. you know, like, I'll, I have my own internal motivators. But I do think, like, sometimes saying a thing to someone else, like, it, it can be just to keep that accountability, like, oh. No yeah. point in telling you I'm yeah. learning Spanish, and then yeah. like if I did that, it's because I yeah. want you to ask in three months' time, how's, how's the Spanish yeah. coming on? Like, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> but if no, but yeah. Not, not, not in Spanish now. I kind of. Can you say a few it. words first? See. <laughs> 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 like I, I, yeah, no, not Spanish, but um, yeah. How you cycle? How fast do you go? Are you cycling on hundred? <clears throat> How fast, what's the, so like, like our 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 road races are 120 kilometers, 130. But they that pure very like it's not like a marathon where it's kind of typically you pick a pace and you yeah. try and hold on. Like there's a load of tactics to get involved. You're up and down mountains. Um, I suppose like the the pure like it's not that we like hit it the whole time, but like the fastest I've ever went um, back in Rio, there was a lot of talk about that descent and all that kind of stuff. We hit 112 kilometers an hour back in what? yeah the speed like, you were going down yeah uh, yeah every time down down that hill we were hitting there was a there was a yoke fo- there was a follow car following us like, like i like literally because it was it was it was it was switchbacks oh, and this and that and anyways all of a sudden we were gone because you had both you had both sides of the road the road was closed like so you had you had the full both sides to actually take bends or whatever so you kind of can let yourself go that bit more than than ordinarily so cycling on roads, which are like yeah. after to be honest, the the buzz of the buzz of racing. Once you get up to, I'd notice now like kind of seventy five, seventy to eighty is that marker where I realise right. Well, do you know there's no point in easing up now because like you're not going. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's not much of a difference between going eighty kilometers an hour and hundred kilometers an hour. To be honest, um, there's that. And he's going that. <coughs> what's going that fast like? Like more specifically in those races when like do you know when you have if it's your vision in particular like how like having less speed, going that speed is that a weird experience? Yeah. You know? Like uh, yeah, it's early doors. It is like, and it's kind of down to your relationship with the pilot as well because the yeah. brake, the brakes are up there. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So you it's see, it's pure, it's, tr- it's pure trust. Yeah, like that's, that's, that's all it is. But but like I've. I've been as weird as it sounds. Like I've been less frightened on the tandem going at that pace than I have at twenty-five kilometers an hour with someone, and I know they're just not confident. Like there's mm-hmm. people that yeah, want to get yeah. on the tandem to see what it's like, but it's not a novelty piece of equipment yeah, either. Sure, like yeah. do you know what I mean? You can actually f- sense their nervousness, yeah. and then I say, "Oh, get me off this thing," because like yeah. it's only it's nerve. Like when someone's cautious, that's when something will happen. Yeah. I think like so. Um, a lot of like coordination on the bike as well. Like with Anthony, like would he tell you when to? <coughs> Yeah, so like we're the, the but the out with the saddle, the like we're working off of the energy system, like so like I have to try and roughly pace it the same way he paces it. We have to yeah. try and mimic each other in every way, shape and form on the bike, like from the aerodynamic element to if he's getting down on the front of the handlebars to just cut into the wind, like I have to be mimicking that. There's but then like I say, down down to the energy, there's no point in me doing a dig for a minute, like one max effort, like and then then I'm absolutely cooked and all of a sudden he has a hundred K to do and he's carrying eleven and a half stone on the back of the bike like or vice versa. So it's it's complete And you both do it at the same time, give mm. it like the full yeah. belly out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the the tricky thing then about my discipline is like so I'm up against now I'm I see both sides of the coin. <coughs> so um obviously I'm visually impaired cyclist on the back of the tandem. So yeah, we have what's known as B one, B two and B three. And that's the Paralympics way of breaking down your, your level of vision. Yes. So I'm a B2. I'm in the center of that, that ballpark. Okay. So there's lads with far better vision than me and lads with far worse. Like, and I do feel for the lads that are fully blind, like because like the advantage I have over them is, is huge in a road race. But then there's feckers like, that, have, that have better vision yes. than me and they have far more independence in their train. They can yeah. actually go off on a solo bike yes. um, on the, the day in between. Like, yeah. yeah, so they're still registered legally blind, but like... Yeah. 
I know we have these Garmin's like so that would have my power meter and heart rate on it like and if you can read that you're at a serious advantage in yes. in a road race because you can actually like oh, yeah well your, your whole energy system is broken down into you know I know what I can hold for 20 minutes I know what I can hold for 40 minutes Brilliant. like so you know within reason like so if you if you can see what you're doing then um, or even when someone's just about to sprint like and you can see the poles are over there they're yeah. just they're just about to make a move like and you know because it's all reaction time in a road race and yeah it's, it ends up being cat and mouse like it's um it's huge dynamic to it but you end up practicing the circuits that you'll be doing in these races now yeah we will like and um, say with tokyo now for example we'll be practicing ever or mimicking or like yeah. as best we can from a distance like so there's gps's we've we went out there actually 18 months ago we went out to check out everton Perfect. and do a little recce and yeah. from from the logistics to like like i said the the standard has gone through the roof the way sports ireland are treating it it's up there with with anything else like so yeah we went out 18 months ago to go through the whole flight patterns check out like because even down to there's an 11 hour time difference like so how long does it take the body to adapt to that how yeah. like get because it's all your circadian rhythm is everything like so once you can get get acclimatized you're you're prepared to perform well um it's broken down into the humidity the temperatures we're going to be simulating up in dublin there'll be there'll be somewhere that's pretty well mimicking temperatures, air conditioning, humidity, all that kind of stuff. Like, and we might be on a stationary bike, but we'll have all the same physiological effects. Like, so, nice. yeah, we will get into the weeds of it. Like, before between now and Tokyo. So, and when is Tokyo? Uh, the opening ceremony is the twenty sixth of August. So, oh. yeah, yeah, it'll come around very quick. Like, considering the qualification window doesn't close till like the tenth of June, yeah. and then then you'll get told roughly ten days after if you've qualified or not, and then you're just straight into it. So how many races have you to do between now and 10 June? Like, really, I'll, I'll do a good few. There's only one of note. Uh, yeah. The Road World Championships is in Belgium, 7th of June. That's oh. that's the only one that can really affect the criteria. In But I'll end up doing maybe 6 to 10 races between now and June. Yeah. Be uh, it domestic I, or abroad, like, yeah. Can I ask them, um, and I'm sure you're like definitely sick of this by now, especially with cameras, like how many interviews people I've seen uh, <coughs> a lot of interviews coming coming towards you asking this but um but I guess I'm just kinda of hoping for like it gets into um, other kind of uh, parts of this conversation that or the other interviews mightn't have touched but um yeah the, what was like the time when you kind of I suppose the first did hit you that about your vision what was like w- like what kind of motivated you to actually get up and kinda of go to actually you know to go for cycling? Uh, or, to, or to, to go not, to not let it get to you. Oh, like, but it did, and yeah. I think, and I think that's kind of the message I'd rather have out there. Like, you know, yes. what? Yeah, but er, but like early doors, like yeah. early doors, I was pretending it wasn't getting to me, uh, and that was that was a really unhealthy thing to do. Do you think you were pretending to like? So like, was in? Did you, do you think you were for yourself or in your head? Did you know it was like? I don't know, it might sound like a stupid question, but did it take you? Is that you so you're talking about externally like what you show to other people was yeah i think i think so like it's that veneer the facade it's like because it was new it was local news it was like the common well how are you getting on and uh, like you know yeah, local yeah. boy local news isn't it um and and, and i think look at it, and obviously there was an element of it uh like fake it till you make it i think yeah. with myself like I, I don't know how much of anything i did was conscious decisions at the time like i know i do know and i i definitely said it before in interviews about like my folks crying in the room and I wasn't crying and that kind of became a mantra for like you know if you don't cry they're not allowed to cry and I kind of tried to own it that if I'm okay. Mr. B- yeah exactly yeah. yeah if I'm okay then everyone else has to be okay because I knew it was affecting other people but yeah. then bit by bit it like I just started like I suppose there's only so long you can do that with yeah. a facade or a front and it is because like my condition was I was losing it gradually so it wasn't like a okay. one slap to the back of the head and I've lost yeah, yeah, 90% yeah. of my vision it was going gradually so like week by week month by month there was new things happening and it was hard to adjust to a new life until I actually got to the finishing point and I didn't know where the finishing point was yeah. and all the, and all that, these that, that, obviously like, all the whole thing is scary but was that an extra scary part I suppose not knowing it was like, did you fear it kind of going fully oh I did yeah 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 even though like told definitely said it before but the the diagnosis like they told me two things like that you won't go fully blo- fully go blind and i can't give it to my children but like i was 20 and like not fully blind 
what does what does that mean like 99 yeah, percent could be not fully like you know and but you can't you can't formulate figures around your vision you know, when you're coming from able-bodied like what yeah. does what does like you don't know what 70 percent of your vision is do you know what i mean like we like we literally start yeah we start thinking in a pie chart or something yeah, like do you know what yeah. i mean like it's like but there's no there's no real life reflection of what that is like so yeah. it just had to kind of it had to play out and i suppose that was a scary bit because i didn't know what the playing out would end up like yeah. um so it's just it's hard to accept because and even you get frustrated in because like you're trying to learn new ways of doing things amid it because you're like right well at least I can be proactive here, but then you learn a new way to use the washing machine and you realize you lose a little bit more vision in two weeks time and it's just, then then you end up just giving up and kind of waiting for it to mm. just do your thing now and fucking get on with it like yeah because you know where does what's the point in learning until yeah. until you actually know what the answer is. Yeah. Um, so that was that was crazy and it was torture and yeah so like I like yeah I didn't deal with it at all but but I do think like it would have been weird if I did like as well yeah. do you know what I mean you, 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 like, dealt with straight away. yeah so I, yeah I almost think there's a process to all of that like do you know yeah. and maybe and do you know it's probably in the same lines as grief like and that was my denial phase yeah. and you're looking at like but I, like I, I kind of there's a phrase I've kind of coined like and do you know a normal reaction to an abnormal thing isn't normal. Do you know what I mean? Like, and, and I think I think that's kind of a problem in life that we kind of sedate we sedate ourselves to feeling like do you know this thing of how how you you and grand. Yeah. Like, what the fuck's grand mean? Like, do you know what I mean? Like the yeah. you, you could be after leave. Like, do you yeah. know, but most people like. I like that. What's that about? Are we all afraid of scaring each other or something? I think it is. Like, yeah, I was reading a thing before about like war vets and how they <coughs> sometimes they don't actually. Like, people are always trying to tell them, talk, talk, you know, be open and open-minded and yeah. just talk to people. Yeah. But, like, they've had an experience where they actually did tell you about something that happened at war and you didn't know how to react to it. And that, that actual, that weirdness kind of made them say, oh, all right, well, I can't unload because no one understands me. And then, that en- and then they end up blocking, like, so... Because I fell down into that hole, definitely, of, like, sure, there's no point in talking, no one, no yeah. one gets it, no one understands me. And that, then, you become, then you make yourself a victim. Yeah. Because like the world doesn't understand me. Yeah. But I stopped looking at it that way. I like I'm absolutely talking to show of it here. Sorry, let's <laughs> but but like I stopped looking at it as in no one understands me. And it's kind of yeah. when you reframe it or step away from it, and it's like, like everyone has a problem. Yes. And maybe maybe I took a bit of solace in that. It's like yeah. there's like okay, this is my thing, and we all kind of point towards the one thing in life that's wrong with us. Yeah. So it didn't matter what happened on a day to day basis with me, like, yeah. and it might have nothing to do with my vision. Like, yeah. you know, granted, if I bang my head, there's a chance that that's yeah. because of my vision. Yeah. But like, guaranteed, you you bang your head in life. Yeah. So ever, like, do you know what I mean? But yeah. I have to make it about my vision. Do you know what I mean? So I had to step away from that and that whole victimized thing, like, and just realize, like, do you know. There's not there's not a house in the country that doesn't have a story, yeah. or something wrong with you know the yeah. uncle yeah. or the sister. Do you know what I mean? Like there's no no one gets away like, with it. Like, I, there's literally nothing worse than the call. I think it's the most harmful and most unnecessary call. And most common call is the um, or not the same call. It's just a saying that everyone's saying. It's definitely embedded in the Irish psyche of uh, you can't have a bag because someone else has it worse. You know that whole mm. thing like. Yeah. Uh, eat, well, not eating all your food because you're starving children. That's an Irish thing. Maybe that makes sense. <laughs> 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 eat dinner. Yeah. But yeah, no, yep. but you know that whole, like, it, yeah, it's, um, how but would you have a bad if someone else, well, just, you know, comparing, like, relativity is definitely a main thing. Yeah, completely. And I, I came across it, I know, was it at a talk or what, but it was that there was someone talking about how, like, you sit around a table like this and you all, you all write down on a piece of paper your problems, like, and slide yeah. them in. Yeah. Chances are you'll take back your own one. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's like, because you probably have the tool. Sorry, so if we all, if we all, we're, we're, we literally are here at a table, like, yeah. but we all write down the thing that's wrong with us, like, yeah. or like our biggest fear yeah. or whatever it is, yeah. like, yeah. whatever, and slide it in, like, oh, and if we start, right. if we start looking at everyone else's one, yeah. there's a fair, yeah, there's yeah, a fair yeah. chance, like, yeah, we'll take back. Your own. Yeah, you yeah, yeah. Take. because like I think, like, ultimately we have the tools to Deal with get on with our own yeah, shit, like, exactly, you know. Yeah. The well, framework. Somebody else said something to me like that about that, that. Really that maybe perhaps before we were born we chose these things. You know what I mean? No, that's, like that's a bit too yeah, deep yeah, for me now. Yeah, <laughs> no, like you, you have to pick yeah. your you have to pick your worst thing or yeah. whatever. You yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. But um, like, do you know, and like when all is said and done, look at it. I 
back to that whole like sedating yourself thing like yeah. I think like like it's just more a problem in life like it's, there's no nothing wrong with feeling do you know what I mean like for me yeah. to feel this I could be saying it's shit yeah and another day I'm grand about it but like to, like I used to when I was young like or whatever this this pure just popping into my head like but yeah. uh, my father would be a good man for quotes now as well yeah. like and he, he used to always be saying to me about how like when you meet those two imposters, both yeah. triumph and disaster, yeah. and treat them both just the same, yeah. right? And the whole that whole line, like I kind of, I went around with thinking it meant one thing. Like I used to think like treat them both just the same, and and the common adage about it is like that you don't get too high when you're happy, yeah. and you don't get too low when you're low. Like, yeah. but I kind of started thinking in recent years, like maybe it it's treating both the same as in treat them equally. Like fucking, if but you're yes. happy, be happy, yeah. and if you're sad, be sad. But like, yeah. okay. ultimately, yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. ultimately, you don't reside in either of those two places. Like most of us live in the middle ground. Like yeah. so, but there's nothing wrong yeah, with I don't actually. Fully understand that quote. Yeah, I know what you mean. No, because yeah. for years, I yeah. I, 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 I don't think when you meet those two imposters, both triumph and yeah. yeah. If by Kipling. Mm. Or, I when, never you, understood it. when you meet those two imposters, both triumph and disaster, treat them both just the same. So, like for years, I thought it was kind of like yeah. in a sporting context, you'd have, like I most of my life lessons are coming through sports or so whatever. Like, but when you win, you're not fucking ah, yeah, yeah, <laughs> whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when you lose, you're magnanimous yeah, as well. Yeah, like, yeah, and yeah, you treat yeah. each, and that's kind of that ends up. Meant by that and that, I think that's the more that's the more common view that yeah. you you treat every take, take things yeah. in your stride. You don't yeah. like yeah. But like, yeah, yeah, no, I get where that's coming and from. And English are like that, that, aren't they? Stiff mm. upper lip and all that kind of crap. You know? Yeah, but I'm, I'm more from the school of like, what's Gold. wrong with feel? Well, yeah. like, yeah, you can look at. It. There's nothing yeah. wrong with being happy, and there's nothing wrong with being sad. Like, yeah, you, yeah. there's, uh, it's relative again. Like, yeah, there's, yeah. there's ways yeah. of doing it where you irritate people, but on both sides <laughs> of that kind, like, do you know what I mean? But like, if yeah, it's, yeah. if it's internal joy, well, like, what's wrong with yeah, saying, with yeah. yeah, like we don't. We, and if back to the appreciation thing, like, you know, there were so many things that I did that were cool moments by any yeah. standards, yeah, like. Yeah. But you kind of just you take it in your stride because it's that Irish thing of like, you know, we don't like to stick our head above the pulpit because yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, that's the one that'll be kicked down. Like, yeah, it's um, yeah. so like. That's the, definitely the Irish. Yeah, but I just mean it's not, it's not like it's not overtly that you have to be a dick about it. I just mean like, <laughs> yeah. but like, what's wrong with like if you get a promotion yeah. and you've worked for that promotion, like just yeah. celebrate, yeah. like yeah, might go might go for an old dinner with her. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's not. I don't mean it in any fandangled way, like, but yeah. but just mark things because we're always looking for the next thing and we don't always like stop and yeah. take stock and it's like, geez, that was a cool three month block of my life there. I I aimed for that. I got it, and now I'm talking about the next thing, like. Yeah, we don't stop to enjoy what we do like so that's all I mean but uh, yeah, I think so I think that's good. I think what you're saying um, I, I like that quote as well I, I get that and uh, I think I, tr- I try to go down that route as well of just trying to react to everything bad or good in that kind of content kind of manner but and it's definitely I don't think it, maybe this is what I think anyway I could be wrong but I don't think either that's a wrong way of living either I just think that that's just not what works for me till I figured out that like I do best like, because I was trying to do that to try and be more productive and, you know, whatever, like, it wasn't necessarily out of, like, um, being out of a sad place, but I found, like, I do more work in the highest, when I mean that, like, extremely high, apart from being content, like, more, not, when I say work, I'm, talk, I'm talking about, um, you know, just being happy just for myself, work for me, like, you know, yeah. but, yeah, when I'm at that high place, it'll be more effective. With that, I can't get to the high place without afterwards. I'll spend like a few days just kind of confused. I don't know, just That's like a sad kind of ne- never depressed, just kind of sad kind of like kind of calm down after everything yeah. being so good. But like, and then, um, but yeah, so I found it was actually more effective to just to feel the low and then go to the high. Yeah, and but then that, the low. trying to get this flat line kind of thing in life, which wasn't working for me. I, I tried to force myself to do this flat line thing and. Just I, I think the dip is the dip is inevitable when you have the yeah. high like in, in anything like yeah. and that's you know I yeah, often get it mean. after after you know, like there's a thing that they're trying to drill into us through the Institute of Sport and stuff like that but there's a thing known as the post post games blues mm-hmm. and like a load of athletes actually get very low after the Olympic site because like they've gave the last yeah. four years of their life with this like tunnel vision yeah. this is the only thing that matters this Holy is the only shit, thing that matters yeah. And then you go to the games and you come back and you have a bit of back slapping for the next Whoa. two weeks, a month. But then if you're if you're one of the athletes that's on that age where you're retired and you don't have another games in you and so many athletes are 
like, like I said, they're so focused on their sport, they're not actually doing much in the self development space, and then they realize, all oh, right, well, I can't actually do much better, like cycle a bike or run a little or whatever, like you know. And now, yeah. and now here I am, technically I'm unemployed and I don't have it. That's really and I just, I just forgo the last twelve years of my life to do this, like unbelievable thing yes. where I seen the world, but like like my peers were all like in kpmg or yeah, yeah. you know and they're they're 12 years further gone in their career and they're you know so yeah it's a very real thing like come down after that's that's really You're interesting i never heard like that's nearly an officer sorry there's nearly there's it's nearly the opposite and i just found it really interesting i've never heard anyone talk about that and it's nearly the opposite of um i know what i'm looking looking at now which is like the importance of um, um, Haley Wood, who, who we had a, a doctor on the podcast, and he talked about a lot about this. She's figuring out this whole structure. I'm not going to that now, but like, yeah, basically, like how important it is to have a goal and stuff. But I guess I've never heard, like, of all the kind of podcasts I listen to that with touching these subjects, anyone say the opposite of, like, what happens when you get to that goal? Like, because I do, you do know, like, that people have, like, like goals that go on and on. Yeah. And I suppose they're kind of fine, they're kind of as they get to that goal, they can find another one. But, and the thing is like, the best thing you can do is have a direct goal. Cause once you have a direct goal, like winning the Olympics, you know exactly what you want. But because that's so direct, that once it's over, then it's kind of like, I can see, I don't, I just think it's really interesting. I've never heard anyone kind of discuss that, how, what happens after you reach the goal thing. I, like. I think it has to be phased or whatever. Like, you know, we all kind of do the, right, go to college, get the job, get the girl get married have yeah. the child yeah, yeah then what do you know what i mean like it's like yeah self-development can be happening at any age of life or whatever like yeah, but yeah. it's um yeah i think it's it's important then and then then you just need to know yourself and know what makes you tick and you yeah. know for some people need to be mad goal driven other people might just need to go for a walk in the woods once yeah. do you know what i mean like once yeah, a day yeah. and they keep some keeps them on an even keel like but yeah they, that's a big thing that they they kind of drill into athletes now like yeah, and it's and it's really good. it's really progressive like yeah, yeah. It's really good, the thing is a like, um like that there's only a certain amount of endorphins or something whatever that if you get really high you are going to be low because you've used them up or is it a chemical thing? i think it, I, it's definitely chemical yeah. it's the it's the yeah i think it's just the surge and then yeah like you, be you've it. used up your weak supply or whatever kind of yeah like but like but then it's like even like, even the subconscious like you're like i know some sometimes happens to me with like a world championships or whatever like you're all of a sudden i could be walking around town and people are like from three months out like say this race now in june yeah. i I, I'm only just back from Toronto. I had a big race there two weeks ago. But since I got back, like I must have told maybe two hundred people that have asked me about cycling, blah blah. And I'm there saying, Oh yeah, no, next big race is June, like and yeah. all of a sudden it's in the subconscious. Yeah, yeah. It's in the subconscious. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like so yeah, yeah, I yeah, think yeah. that's where nerves even start coming yeah, yeah, from yeah, yeah. is the fact that like I've drilled this into myself, yeah. like this is a big race, this wow. is a big race and then like you make it you make it a thing that that's a date. There, there's a line in the sand uh, yeah. and you know and there's as not interest. as regards my cycling there's not a plan after that like there's there's two there's two ways it plays yeah. out like do you yeah. know what i mean if it goes well and you're going to tokyo right Brilliant. the next three months are mapped out yes. but if it doesn't go well you know do you know what i mean like so yeah i think um you're doing a lot of talking though aren't you um, like, yeah uh, yeah i'm doing a lot of talking here yeah, anyway. you were doing, <laughs> you were doing um, professional talk professional talks and stuff up yeah, yeah. So I got into that a few years ago now. Like motivational uh, speaking yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, even though like I hate that word, like, and yeah. you know, yeah, I know yeah. what that's what they're called, and and call what, uh, like, and it's. Can you think of a word? Let's rebrand motivational speaking now here on this podcast. Yeah, that's that's one for your listeners now. Definitely get um get some inputs, but like it's yeah, it's a, it's a real <laughs> yeah, it's a real weird concept like you know um because yeah. i don't see it as that like it's storytelling do you know what i mean or it's I, like story, i like that better yeah. Yeah. um but i story time with peter yeah uncle pete uncle pete so i am so story time with peter what's it consist of what's it consist of there there lies the burning question low like just egotistical rants um <laughs> i got into it it started off nice little humble beginnings um so i'd be closely aligned with fighting blindness through my own journey obviously and all the work that they're doing and there was a mate of mine working for him so i i would have received all my counseling initially like through them and they like and that was where i was getting peer support and like i didn't even identify with being visually impaired for a long time until i actually started meeting people through that organization so i kind of felt a, a need to give back for a yeah, yeah. for a long time with them but um 
they asked me to go into a school and just talk a bit of education around what it's like to be visually impaired and t- talk to be- people about it and that was grand and look at it obviously I like it do you know what I mean ultimately so that was because I it, like it's not it's not always it's, it's as much for me like I get something out of it as well yeah. that's the that's the irony with um, selflessness I suppose really it's like the other person gets something as well but um so that just by degrees anyway they asked me to do a gala dinner and before I knew it like I was like I was realising that I really enjoy it and yeah and that kind of growed so like I'm I'm an ambassador at Fighting Blindness now and I do a lot of work with VHI Wellness as well so I'm after getting an ambassadorship with them as well so yeah it's look at it's proper work like do you know what I mean it's well it's not it's one of those things like like you know if it's something you love it's never work but it's but like I'll be but it is in the sense that I'll be mad nervous beforehand after it after i do a talk like i do like going to corporates or whatever or schools and i'll do an hour of a talk and a q a i'll be drained that evening would like, you be nervous oh, yeah, quite i'd be nervous beforehand i think that day i'm not nervous i need to get out of yeah, it yeah, yeah. because i'm like like i always think like i'm giving away my story i'm yeah, giving away i'm giving away a piece of myself like because yeah, yeah. they, they're not mad scripted that's i'll never yeah. i'll never get accused no i'll never get accused of yeah, him <laughs> um but like even even when you, I got this, you don't go blank around, yeah, ever. No, oh, no. Well, I you, you spoke at my graduation last year, actually, yeah. Yeah. in Templemore. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There a few months ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah there. So graduation from what? I was doing makeup. Um, All right. the college, yeah. Over yonder. I was I was given a five yeah, minute yeah. remit there. We generally go down like I like a toll, like going to corporate, like you're talking an hour of a slot and wow. yeah, uh, forty five minute talk, forty minute talk, leave some time for questions, like but it's you have a um, map in your head when you, when you go out. Ah, uh, yeah, no, I have the skeleton of it in my head. Um and it depends on the, the organisation and some people say, right, we're having a we're having a wellness week and yeah. our other things are I'm doing one in far not in the tree arena, far tree next month and it's all around high performance. Okay, so it's yeah. gonna be it's actually gonna be a different talk altogether, like but it's be more what we were talking about the start around the diligence of mm. self prep or whatever, but like the the general run of the middle one is my story and depends on the age demographic or who's in the room or whatever I might just take it off on different tangents and I I love I love that ability of having it not overly scripted that I can I I could be at the event two hours beforehand and I might pick up something like you know you might be giving a presentation to your workmates and I pick up something that's in vogue in this company at the time and I like that's what I like about it like make keep it real keep it current keep it that's definitely um, a less common approach I think because it is um I suppose like just because of the count, count and nerves and stuff, people are going to. It sounds like what I'm saying. It sounds like uh, I mean, people doing that kind of thing would they they structure um, a presentation and that's it. They go there. They're not gonna. They're gonna ignore everything else that's around them. But it sounds like mm. you're always kind of open. You know, you're still aware. You're sounding where you don't get into your head. Where you're like, you know, that's. I think that's where nerves go to when you get too caught up in presenting this exact thing. perfect thing that you formulated at home. Whereas, whereas you're like. Um, very open and to allowing like it to move even like before the show if you see something that could kind of yeah but show. but you know what it, it's, it's like show, the, the the obvious thing that's wrong with me has given me these kind of strengths like so like I'm like I can't see very well yeah. I'm shit at IT yeah. do you know what I mean so like if I do up slides I can't see them anyway so yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean there. so but like but I have I, the nerves that you can't see their faces um, I'd be still nervous now. I would be nervous. Yeah, yeah. You feel it, like, um, feel it, like, it def it pr- probably strange. helps with the like I I move around when I'm talking. I like could be hand movements, but I'm not actually catching anyone's eye. Perfect. Like, do you know what I mean? So yeah, may- yeah. maybe yeah, yeah. maybe s- there's subtle ways it is it is easier for me. But um, yeah. But it's funny. Like there, you think there's so many things that you know initially, right? You're only dwelling on the stuff that you can't do. But like I kind of have to think. Oh, it's, if I'm open to seeing them like there's a lot of things that it's after allowing me to do like be it the talk and be yeah. it the like because I, like I had to do a lot of self-reflection I had to do a lot like be it through counselling or through a treatment centre or through any of these things like I learned an awful lot about myself like I started being a 24 year old that had probably a bigger mature age because yeah. yeah. it like just the road I went yeah. down and the reflection and whatever and then like like this is like I'm willing to admit, like it's it's a cool little story. It's different. Do you know what I mean? It's not it's, it's not run of the mill, like yeah, and yeah. and there's there's shit parts to that, but there's a lot of cool things, yeah. and it's made. 
like I say, like on diagnosis day, you think like worst thing in the world, yes. nothing is any good ever again. I, yeah. I, all this stuff that I can't do, I can't do, I can't do, I can't do. And like now, you know, I've been to so many different countries. I've met the coolest of people. Like, wow. and it's just like, you know, it, it, it gives a lot as well. Like if you're open to pursuing it, like so, it kind of, it kind of yeah. motivates me to to see the new side of it as well like and what it can give you so it's um it's a funny one it's a funny little conundrum it is true that we all go to like the worst possible thing when we hear something bad don't we everything is shit oh, all of a sudden is that a survival thing or is that just an old school and we catastrophize everything yeah. oh it's once it's in our account it's catastrophized yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, okay, yeah, like no. that night like that whole you won't go fully blind like yeah. you won't go fully blind there's so many positives in that now yeah. But at the time it was like, oh my god, I'm going ninety nine percent black. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. or with the negativity stuff, it always was the practical stuff. It was like, it started off. It was literally the things that were being taken away from me, and you can't see this, and now you can't see your feet, and now you can't drive your car, and now it was complete practical. Yeah. But like, like m- momentum on the negative side like starts to spiral, and then I was projecting. I was like, oh, you can't have a girlfriend, and now you can't. You know, you'll never get married because you can't drive a car and I was like 21 telling myself all these things that you can't do you can't do you can't do and it's you just like you know you've actually future proofed yourself now yeah. and now, now at this stage I'm 55 and do yeah, yeah. you know what I mean I'm living at home yeah. with a sheepdog I know cause, yeah. I because because you just ruled yeah, out that was good something you said about like uh, you were worrying about collecting kids from school that didn't exist yeah <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah yeah no it's like, you know, you know what I mean that's that's yeah. that's and uh, do you know what I mean I don't I don't was, like that's trying bad. to yeah. that's good uh, like yeah. that's good but like the way you pull back how do you pull your brain back to no there is no kids at the minute what are you like it, it is more the day to day and the yeah, buzz of it. The like yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah, I have, I have my goals and I have plans and yeah. I, th- I think it's nice to challenge yourself as well. Like that whole buzz of do something you never thought you could do or whatever it is. Yeah. Like you know, it's not always you know even going surfing with yourself. Yeah. Like that's yeah. definitely not the yeah. the visually impaired stereotype. No. Like you know, but it was a that. yeah, like, yeah. but it was a nice little challenge. And there's yeah. a load of like I don't like the beach being visually impaired. Like you've no concept of. Like Remember once, I once I'm in the water, like yeah. and I come yeah. out, like I, yeah. if I, you know yourself, anyone drifts down yeah, twenty yards yeah, down yeah. the oh, down yeah, the beach, well, like. He was flying it out the but I, but I do it, but it's complete bluffing and mm-hmm. hoping that things will just I work. Kept <laughs> like, I, I kept, it's it's yeah, not like. Forget he can't see. Yeah. But I, I was saying, is this a good way of? And you were like, I'm not the best person to. Ask <laughs> <laughs> I love how involved you made me feel, but I just like I just drifting on the board and wait <laughs> wait that someone says right go, <laughs> but like. Well, like, yeah. but that's the thing, because if you if you start telling yourself like what you can't do, like that list doesn't stop either. So yeah. like, right, there's things that make no sense for me to do, but I'll try them, like, or I'll just try and enjoy them. The same, because literally down to watching the telly in my sitting room with the lads, like, sure, if I want to go down that negative road, it's like, yeah. oh, I'm not watching this because I can't see it. I know. Yeah. And it's like, where does that stop? Yeah, like, yeah, do you yeah. know, so sometimes right, and I might be ticketed and. I'll sit down and I right, it's like oh this is very much like I went to two films lately I went to like to the cinema I went to the Joker and I went to 1917 right. 1917 is all visual like okay. it's all that yeah. cinematic oh, yeah. rats and faces yeah. and you know and I hated it but like but it's the normal thing to do to just go yeah, yeah, and yeah. just get over myself yeah, and yeah, it's yeah. not because I just I'm kind of half afraid of oh I'm not doing that because I'm vis- like if I yeah. kind of if I that's a slippery road to go down is the way I see it so like so just do it but it and depends get on the on film it. as well doesn't it whether it's going Completely. to be or not if it's yeah. a dialogue like I like yeah. going to comedy gigs yeah, perfect, do you know what I mean yeah, I don't yeah, like yeah. going to as many I don't like going to as many concerts yeah. like do you know but because you just get lost in the crowds yeah, and it's yeah, not yeah, it's yeah. not a cool place but I will go to them yeah, yeah, but yeah. like I'm not openly seeking them out either I just try and keep the normality in my yeah, life yeah. like um, can I ask, and this I, I, this could be like an, an ignorant question, because I, I know you can't ever, like you'll never, none of us will ever be able to kind of just see what you see, and I draw the whole, this is kind of mm. a silly question really to ask, but... <laughs> You're going to do it anyway. <laughs> no, I'm going gonna, gonna to change it in a way that like, so yeah, when people ask that, you know, like they ask, um, what's it like to be able to see the way you see, but I'm more curious about like colour, like, I'm curious like the colour, is colour affected by it? Like, is it um, oh, like finite colors like yeah i'm not gonna be like did the colors become less fiber yeah yeah 100 percent. like but like you kind of i'll need the ex- so i only have 
like about a meter of a radius like that's my world but like even within that because i have no central vision i can't see what i'm looking at like so i like it's only peripheral that i have um but color is like yeah like uh, like my blacks and navies i wouldn't be great reds and oranges i wouldn't be great but i'll get i'll know the difference between like bright and dull yeah yeah. but it has to be in that those parameters of in this close like Joe, once it's but like everything is down to context like as well like so it's yeah. um it's a uh, okay i i still struggle trying to describe my level of vision at home oh, to my yeah. folks like do you know and that's and that's For the sure. honest truth around it because because what happens is like the vision is now the same but like my ability to adapt my like the context of the situation like even down to i could i do you know if i met you down in tremor Karen, like your voice wouldn't be, I wouldn't, like, I'm not, sometimes I'm not confident enough to say, oh, sorry, do you mind telling me, like, because I just think it sounds ignorant, it's like, oh, who are you, who are you? but, like, I can't, I can't see you over there, so if I, yeah, but, like, I do, because I, like, because it's a, a voice. You have a good excuse if you genuinely do forget as well, like. But it's, it's a voice plus a place equals a yeah, person yeah, in my head, yeah, like, yeah, so well. that's, you kind of, so context comes into it, so I, I could give, I could give two minutes talking generically to you and you might you might let it go. You might say, Jesus, we did a great podcast there last Thursday with someone. And it's like, ah, oh, boom, I'm here, la, 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 la. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's you like, can't look too happy because you... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care after that. <laughs> like, poker face is gone. Yeah, yeah. But you know, that's, that's, the, that's the reality of the day-to-day. But everybody like, does that, don't they? Yeah. Wing, wings yeah, out people. So like, yeah, yeah. But again, back to that, like, but because this is the thing that's wrong with me. Oh, I yeah. wouldn't I wouldn't yeah. let myself think that oh sure that happens to everyone yeah, I'd yeah, be I saying know. oh sure I'm the only fool yeah, that can't, can't see Mary yeah, at the other yeah, side yeah. of the road or do you know so yeah. it's like yeah um, yeah that's that's my gig that's mad and come yeah, here but what was I going to say um, the, what, what is it dead is it our, our, uh, what is it patreon.com slash Irish podcast by his new batteries no, I was just saying about your your uh, your today's Monday, isn't it? Are you doing that? Yeah, so you're doing another a show. Yeah, an old hooli. Yeah. An old hooli. Peter's having a hooli. You're doing uh, a gig, aren't you? Yeah, I'm having a hooli. Let's um, right little dance. So the old, the old Sunday <laughs> evening dance. Uh, yes. Yeah, so, what are we talking? Saturday, eighteenth of April. So. Saturday, eighteenth uh, of April. So next week we'll be advertising properly, but what we're this doing week. is, oh, sorry, this, this week. Where week. am I? Yeah, yeah. The cosmo, <laughs> the cosmosis. Uh, how long have we been here? <laughs> um, so yeah, Saturday eight 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 to start at the end of the night. We have Hermitage Green booked. They're oh, coming to play. Actually. Yeah, so I'm yeah, and delighted delighted with them now. Um, so they're booked in. But the whole overarching team of the night is we're having a panel discussion first. Uh, we're going to have some real conversations because look, that's what I think is valuable in life. People actually talking about shit, not just bottling it up. So there's an organisation up in Nina called Karma and they've started up I think officially since September but they were probably operating maybe six months before that yeah. um, it's a walking counselling service for people it's suffering Karma Karma yeah. yeah it's a cool name um, <laughs> so yeah they, they're a walking counselling service for people with mental health and addiction problems okay. and I suppose the, the caveat of that is like that's something there are two problems that aren't generally treated under the same umbrella um, yeah. uh, politics is kind of letting and letting that sphere down like even though those those two things are so intertwined it's not even funny now you don't have to be have both afflictions to go in there you could yes. be either yeah. or but they're one like the, the general run of the mill if you go to a, a HSE addiction counsellor and you you're complaining about having those like those traits it's like, well, th- you end up picking one. So you end up moving from Billy to Jack. It's like, okay, you get sent to a mental health professional over here and you get sent to an addiction professional over here. But the problems are completely intertwined. So, look, at all I want to do is give them a bit of help because what I think they're doing uh, is, like, it's badly needed, but it's just great work. And it's not a fundraiser per se. We're literally just trying to get people in the room, get arses on seats. Yeah, we're going to have a celebrity panel discussion. People... I know like a couple, couple of people that I've met through the talking scene and whatever, some high profile names will be announcing them towards the end of next week. But, end of this week. well, the end of this week, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Where, are, where are my manners? Is that Friday? <laughs> that'll, be a, that, that'll, be a, that'll be a Saturday night. Saturday, Saturday night, yeah. 
and it's just like true. Yeah, yeah. If you have it, if you have it, if you, have it if you, you can set the pods up in there, lads. You'll you'll get full access. But um, it's just get real people talking about like, and these are these are high flyers in life, and how do you know yeah. these these problems they don't discriminate. Do you know what I mean? So we often, uh, do you know, get tightened up and think we're the only one. But you know, I think I I'm not looking to. Like it's not. I could give all weekend throwing twenty euros into a bucket for this fundraiser, that fundraiser. I really just want like the value is getting people in the room, getting people to listen to what is being said, yeah. and we're going to have some speakers from the organisation and just let people know the work because it's only up the road and it's a great service and we all know someone or have someone in our lives that you know. Where's the Clamel? Is it? No, uh, okay. it's up in Nina. Nina. Yeah, and I just think like there's so many like we have homelessness problems, we have fucking like. Like we have like HSC problems, we have problems left, right, and centre in life. But there's there's a load of stops on that on that journey before yeah. you end up, you know, yeah. be it homeless or be it yeah, with a psychosis or like there's a shortage of mental health beds. There's, the, but like you know, you could you could save someone or some family a lot of hardship by just like getting these conversations so out there. So if you have mental health problems or addiction problems in Torres, you can drop into Nina into their centre. Yeah, 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 yeah. And where, I where is it? Um, it's up. It's on the main street in Nina. Like, and I know. Okay people might say oh that's very far away but like there's no there's no mental health facility like at the moment if you go down to Clam Hill yeah. like and that's and uh, the way I see it like that's the end of the yeah that, like that, that's kind of when you start hitting to rock bottom territory like but yeah. this could be this could, like you could be going in with anxiety you could be going in with a host of problems like it's not like you don't have to wait until it gets that bad yeah it's the stitch in time thing isn't yeah. it like yeah. Yeah, yeah a lot yeah. of people do don't they they're afraid to win because they don't think they're that bad or you know what I mean isn't I they know, they let like, get and, bad and, before they and we think we think of everything in a stereotype yeah. like you're not an alcoholic yeah. unless you're under a bridge with a brown paper bag like yeah. it's like you know there, it's not it's not even about that it's about your relationship with these things like you could yes. you could find out you're addicted to Netflix after going to the night. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah, not. Yeah. I think it comes in different formats, and we're a bit more open-minded to know what's a toxic relationship. Like, because I always think like, like I had a very bad relationship with drink, but it was like it was me. And mm. you, you mightn't call me an alcoholic, but I ultimately did think that I was one. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, whereas some of my mates were like, "Oh, you weren't that bad." It's like, yeah, but you don't know Can't what was going on in my. You know, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah, you you aren't Joe, you know, but yeah, my yeah. my family know where it went, and Joe yeah. you know, and they got hurt by it so it's like it's it's a really subjective thing like so I just want yeah it's mad when people would actually t- kind of um, not even always in a, 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 in, there's, no, there's no bad intentions but the whole idea of telling someone that they actually wouldn't be addicted to share because it is they're comparing it to your textbook as you say a guy under a bridge and stuff like that but sometimes they don't, problem, they, right? don't, they don't want you to have a problem because then they might have to examine uh, their own shit oh, yeah. that's a fact do you know it's yeah, like oh because he's not much worse than me. As long as I have you as a boss. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We need, we no, we need, we that's always need to have the messy yeah. one in the group, like. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's wow. kind of where it's at. Wow. Yeah, what's the you, know, you, you just make an appointment and go in if you want or what? It's it's walk in, but walk yeah, in. yeah. No, they end up like obviously. Look at they're they're struggling financially as well, so they have to put a bit of structure around their week and yes. around opening hours when they've they've group sessions and one on one sessions like yeah. so it is it's go up there walk in meet someone they won't they won't send you away that's one thing for sure and it's like but alcohol and drugs and whatever it it's matter. it's just mental health and addiction yes. yeah 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 but it doesn't matter what kind of addiction you have no, no. Uh, any problem yeah. so um yeah look at like i said we're just we're looking to have a good night and not a, a uh, we're not we're not looking to bum anyone out like we're yeah. we're looking to have real conversations i have a have a cool mc you got for it there, there actually will be there will be and i and i as hypocritical as it sounds and bags of kids <laughs> but it's a major get, session kids lost yeah yeah so we get messy yeah oh we'll have it all there yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> But um, okay. but there's no point in like no, like it's not a, it's not a teetotal night like exactly, I think I'm yeah. only gonna put people off by yeah, doing absolutely. that like For it's sure, it's yeah, it. you're right. and um, it's not not everyone has a bad relationship with alcohol yeah, do you know what I mean like so yeah. it's um and it's not gonna be honing in on any of those things it's gonna be yeah. it's gonna be entertaining but there'll yeah. be a there'll be a bit of authenticity I suppose to it that you know um, it's kind of like it's kind of like how people oh no go on no go on 
hermitage group. Oh, yeah, they're brilliant, aren't they? Yeah. So good. It's, yeah, it's kind of like it's so you're kind of like it's kind of like setting up an intervention for a friend, but you invite him over and you say, "I'm coming over for a drink," and then all of a sudden, yeah. But that's not drinks in the premier hall, and you get there, and you're like. But it's like, about drinking. but, <laughs> 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 but genuinely, like, like that's why, like, I have Hermitage Green playing. Like, I want to have, I want, I want to have something for everyone in the audience. Yeah, like, yeah, you know, sure. from from the speakers, some people will go just because Hermitage Green are there. Yeah, you know what I mean, and I yeah, and yeah. I knew that. Like, yeah, I kind of, yeah, I kind of yeah. want them going for a bit of fun, but actually take go home with a bit of value. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's not the sort of thing where I say, oh, we're gonna go because we're gonna learn so much about X, Y, and Z. That generally is, that it, right. it's not the makings of why people yeah. say, do you want to go yeah. out on Saturday night? Yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? But they will say, let's go to Hermitage Screen. And if, yeah. they, if they go home with the value, that's what I want. Like, the so. best, I think that's the best way to get value across is by like, you know, doing something entertaining. Like, it's like, do you watch like interviews and stuff? Like, that's kind of what we're trying to do with podcasts is try and become as entertaining as we can and get comfortable in some cameras just so we can provide entertainment and then the value because people will stick with the value when they're entertained at the same time like if you set up that gig and there was no drink and it was just hermitage green and everyone's sitting down like it's going to be kind of like a loud, a loud game of bingo or something you know you yeah know, that. Like, completely that, like yeah, you're doing the right thing there i think so look at and as well like we need to bring a bit of life in around the town and have have events like so yeah cool Hey, do you describe wholesome Hollywood in one word? Oh, humbling. Words. Humbling has to be. <laughs> I'm not allowed to use that word. I'm not allowed to use Fair enough. <laughs> I'm reading a good book about Harvey Weinstein about it at the minute. Oh, he, yeah. he, owns, um, he doesn't know anything about that. Because no. that was going to be a joke. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to name it. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so three words wholesome Hollywood. Wholesome Tires. Hollywood. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you on the Turles thing, but I, I, I definitely think like potential has to be thrown in there. But like then, like, yeah, like there's so much of it here. Like, um, but like I, I bring most things back to my childhood. Like and just cool communities. Yeah. I think like if you go around that. 15 20k radius like you know i've made so many friends around that that sphere from the town like people that gravitate towards school in Tarlis here like yeah, you know yeah. there's some there's a lot of decent people out there yeah. uh, um what about to you can you describe i've only got one so far one word mm. what is it unique ah <laughs> i think so <laughs> for Tarlis. yeah unique in new york <laughs> no harvey weinstein no. <laughs> <laughs> when I say the reason it's not just called Hollywood, it's called Holes in Hollywood, because there's no Harvey Weinstein, there's no uh, pretentiousness, and there's no, I was a bit of pretentiousness, there's no plastic surgery. That's what I mean by Holes sure. in Hollywood. Yeah, so, yeah. Holes in Hollywood, one word. No, I have no idea. I'm no, no. Pantries. Pantries. Uh, no. Oh, yeah, that's why Don Garvin, then. Um, yeah. Don Garvin was. Why don't you jump up in the bin? <laughs> so you don't get that in Hollywood. <laughs> No, you don't. Okay. No, well done. A bit of community <laughs> skills. <laughs> <laughs> and the way of the <laughs> <Talents> come in. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, yeah, I think we're going to finish up, man. Uh, um, yeah, I really appreciate you sharing your story. And um, I'm sure you're sick of people asking you the story, but yeah. hopefully it'll help. It'll definitely help uh, someone that's listening to. I suppose definitely be more motivated and keep going. Keep going, yeah. Yeah, no, thanks for having me. Like I it's not it's a weird one. Like it's like I I don't like I'm I'm happy out to tell my story whenever I just feel yeah. like I feel like other people must be like because 'cause I'm sure there's there's some people near no. near me that have heard it like ten <laughs> times, like AK Hugh, like and it's just like no, it's cool, Oh it's not again, new, not, new, not new, again. No, it was a new take on it. Yeah, it was, it was, it was I think I so. Think, and I, I liked like, it. She was saying I was gonna say that Jake, she was saying that earlier about you don't reason like I, I know why you don't like uh, calling it more more professional speaking because I suppose it all has become big now and it's become common, and I think the reason you might like it is because there's so much bullsh like people bullshitting, and I promise you and I was like really felt this watching one interview in particular is that um I wouldn't worry in your sake of uh talking too much or anything like that or you know saying your story too much yeah. because you really don't um give off that you don't present that at all like you can genuinely feel I'm not just saying that to be nice either you, you just I no, stay doing it, stay well, that's why I don't script it. it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's yeah, that's like exactly that's what I mean. I like the day it becomes linear in format, then it's yeah. like it's not it's not actually real. Like it's just yeah. a theater. So thanks, man, oh, for having me, lads. Yeah, um, thanks a million to everyone for existing. That's hand, hand, handy. Um, yeah, thanks to the Green Sheep for letting us film here, and uh, 
Thanks to DH Ryan Architects who sponsored this lovely new camera. Um, it's lovely, isn't it? I'm doing this. But you're not. You didn't. He didn't buy the audience. But there's a camera that you're watching this on, and that's what I'm thankful for. That's what DH Ryan had bought for us. Thanks to DH Ryan Architects from Turners for sponsoring us that uh, great equipment and um, yeah we're, we're working on getting new audio equipment. I actually think this wasn't recorded the whole time I so just know hopefully, that, yeah. hopefully um, but the other one you can't do work. Never mind. So we, we have. We so it's hard again, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that that's recording this kind of song. Don't worry about it. Um, yeah, but we're we're getting new audio equipment in the next few weeks, and you're going to see Ireland's most uh, loquacious podcast. Loquacious. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> talkative. Oh. Talk, like talkative. Um, yeah, Ireland's most loquacious. Loquacious. Oh. Loquacious. Most, uh, what else? This is like Sesame Street. Every, 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 every week I, I learn a new word. And I have to look it up when we leave. Yeah. Welcome back to Ireland's most extra linguistical podcast in the world. Uh, no, we'll see, you, see you next week. Bye. 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 Sesame Street. Ireland's most Sesame Street.